Welcome to the St. Francis Prep College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. Each will have six minutes to share more about their institution, but we'll be around for the entire session to answer questions. My name is Charlotte and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website. This presentation is being re recorded and will be available at strivescan.com SFP. I'd now like to turn it over to our first presenter, University of Michigan. Hello, um, greetings from the University of Michigan. My name is Isabel Luna Lopez. I'm an admissions representative here at the Office of Undergrad Admissions, and I'm really excited to talk about the University of Michigan today. So first, when introducing students to the University of Michigan, we first like to reflect on our past institution, where we are today, and where we see ourselves going in the future. So the University of Michigan is is located on the traditional territory of the Ashinaabe people. In 1817, the Jawai, Ottawa, and Badawatami nations made the largest single gift to the early university. When they ceded land through the Treaty of at the foot of the rapids so their children could be educated. Through these words of acknowledgement, their ancestral and contemporary ties to the land and their contribution to the university are renewed and reaffirmed. So when talking to the University of Michigan, I like talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Every department and unit here at the University of Michigan is responsible for promoting these ideals. And over the years, we have opened up the Maize and Blue Food Pantry, um, helping students that are dealing with food scarcity, and also we build a new home for our Charter Multicultural Center. So University of Michigan is a large public research institution. We are located Southeast Michigan, what just an hour drive from Detroit. And Ann Arbor has been known for um, being one of the best college towns in the United States. And there's so many natural spots, over 300 plus restaurants and a lot of cute shops around here on campus. And our students are coming from all counties of Michigan, all 50 states in the United States, and over 100 different countries all over the world. Beyond being geographically diverse, our students identify with a diversity of background, races, religion, culture, and educational interest. And 14% of our students are first-generation students, and 18% are Pell Grant recipients. We have 14 schools and colleges that are open to undergrads. We have 280 plus majors to choose from, and we like to make this big school feel a bit smaller. That's why we have a 15 to one student to faculty um, ratio. There's many ways to be involved here on campus, and we have over 1,600 student orgs to choose from. You can join Dance Marathon, the uh, Michigan Daily, and also um, a lot of recreational clubs. We also are the number one public research university in the US. Um, 1,300 um, of our students are part of um, research here on campus. And we have a 630,000 um, living alumni worldwide. Now applying to be a Wolverine. Through our holistic um, application read process, we aim to look at, to know the whole you. So we do take a look at GPA. Our average GPA here at the University of Michigan is 3.9 on unweighted 4.0 scale, but we still accept students above and below this GPA. We do look at your grades through ninth to 11th grade, any grade trends, you may start off a bit rough on ninth grade, but if you have improved, we just take a, we take a look at that. We also look at contextual review, meaning we wanna see where you stand within your um, high school, your ranking. Um, with curriculum, we want to see that you're taking four to five academic courses each year. You're challenging your curriculum, taking all those AP, IB, honors classes that your high school does um, provide, any dual enrollment that you're a part of. And also, we do take a look at test scores. Um, we are accepting S SAT or ACT scores. Um, but if you choose not to, you will not be penalized. We are text flexible, so you can always submit your AP or I IB exam scores if you choose to, or you can do a self-report. 
We also take a look that you've been part of extracurriculums, any clubs or organizations that you're part of in your school or in your community, any community service, athletics, part-time jobs, religious involvements, or even family responsibilities, meaning taking care of your siblings. Um, with recommendations, we do have a one required teacher recommendation, um, and also a counselor can also write your letter of recommendation. We do ask for an official school report sent by your high school counselor. And for essays, when you're applying on the common application, you will have one essay that you do have to do, have to write for all the colleges that you're applying. But here at the University of Michigan, we also require two more, which is our community essay. We want to hear what community you're a part of. And also the Why Michigan essay. Why do you choose to study here at the University of Michigan? We also um, accept the optional COVID-19 impact essay. And um, for more information about the University of Michigan, um, please um, talk to your um, territory counselor. It's right here on the screen. If you want to take a picture, you can email them for more information about the University of Michigan. Um, on our website, we have virtual tours. You can watch YouTube videos, information sessions, contact us. Um, but please visit our missions.umich.edu and follow our social media. Thank you. Thank you for starting us off, University of Michigan. Up next will be University of North Carolina, Greensboro. Oh, I can see your presentation, but you are on mute. There we go. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Lizzie. I use she, her pronouns, and I am an admissions counselor at the University of North Carolina, Greensboro. So we are part of the public UNC system um, here in North Carolina, and our campus is in Greensboro. We have about 19,000 students in total, um, 16,000 of those students being part of our undergraduate class. We have students that come from 70 countries and 48 different states. Our location is denoted by the Spartan head um, on that map. So as you can see, we are right in the middle of North Carolina. Um, so our location is one of my favorite parts about being able to work here and live here. Um, we are the third largest city in North Carolina, and we have a lot of different public transportation options for you. Um, so we have an airport about 15 minutes away. We have our Greensboro bus transportation system, which is actually free with your student ID. And we also have a train station that has Amtrak as well. So there's a lots of options to get around here. Um, being in the middle of the state, we are two, three hours from the beach or the mountains. Um, and Greensboro is a college city. Um, so we have about 45,000 students um, within a mile of downtown. Um, so Greensboro really does embrace that side of itself. Another thing I always love students to think about when they're out doing college fairs and tours is not just think about those years that you'll be at school, but also after and what type of environment you would like to be in. Um, so Greensboro is actually ranked among the top 10 up and coming cities for jobs by Forbes in 2019. So you know that this is somewhere that is growing and is going to have opportunity for you even after you graduate. So here at UNCG, we have about 350 different student organizations. Um, all of these range from Greek life. We have a club and intramural sports along with our 17 different division one teams. We have a lot of service oriented clubs. Um, like I said, we have a really great relationship with our downtown community and we love to give back to them. And um, so that's where a lot of our service comes in. We also have professional organizations for any students on pre-professional tracks. We also have some fun clubs like a napping club. We have a squirrel watching club. Um, so it's really easy to create your own club here at UNC Greensboro. Um, all you would need is yourself, five other students and a faculty advisor, and you can create your own club. Um, we are one of the most diverse schools in the UNC system. So it's really important for us to have a lot of different options for our students and a place where they can have a home away from home. So as I mentioned, we have about 16,000 undergraduate students here. Um, but what I love about being a mid-sized school is that you can still have smaller classroom sizes. So our average class size is 25, and the student to teacher ratio is 20 to one. 
And now all of our classes, you're going to have resources for those. Um, so some of those include our writing, speaking, and math centers. And they do kind of what they sound like they would do. We also have a supplemental instruction program, and that goes along with any of your general education courses. And our faculty are also required to hold office hours every week. Now here we have over 175 different degree programs and pathways that you can choose from, and we have six different schools here on campus. Um, not going to be able to get into all of those today, but I did want to cover each one just so you can get an idea of some of the things that we do offer. So we have our Bryan School of Business and Economics. Um, we are actually ranked a top, on the top 1% of business schools in the world, so it's really popular here at UNC Greensboro. We have our College of Visual and Performing Arts. Now, this, uh, this school has a lot of uh, second application requirements, so that might mean applying to UNC Greensboro and then also applying to the major, or there might be an audition that needs to be held, um, so that's always something to keep in mind. We have our School of Health and Human Sciences. Um, so this includes majors like social work, public health. Kinesiology is probably the most popular. Um, so anything about sports medicine, physical therapy, how the body moves. We have our School of Nursing, which houses our nursing major. And um, we are ranked the top second public nursing school in the state. And our nursing facility is also the newest in North Carolina. So it's a really great place to learn. It is a rigorous program. Um, we only accept about 100 students every fall semester. And we have our College of Arts and Sciences. So this is gonna be the biggest and most diverse school. It's gonna have hard sciences like biology and chemistry. You'll have majors like English and history and also our popular psychology and sociology majors. And then we have our School of Education. So here we have elementary education and we also have one with a focus on special education. And it's also where we have our library science program which is also super popular. All of our majors and listings can be found on our website um, and any ac secondary application components along with those. So this is to give you an idea of what our 2021 first year class looked like. So the average GPA for our first year students is a 3.59. Now we are test optional and will be test optional through fall of 2024, so for the next two years. Um, but to give you an idea, our average ACT score is a 24 and the average SAT is an 1181. Now anyone interested in applying, we are on the Common app and you can also apply directly through our UNCG portal. We do require um, transcripts and an essay for scholarship consideration. I'm also the one that would be reading your uh, application. So if you have any questions, you can have my contact information here um, and I'm excited to read applications. Thank you, University of North Carolina Greensboro. Um, before I introduce the next institution, I want to encourage you to put any questions you have in the Q&A. We want this to be interactive, this session. Okay, up next will be Loyola University, Maryland. Hi everyone, my name is Joanne, um, Loyola University of Maryland, and I'm also going to be your college rep for your area. So to give you a brief background, Loyola University is one of four Loyolas, but we have not, we're not related to the other ones. We are actually the first Loyola, very happy, proud to say. Um, so we're a private liberal arts Jesuit university and the Jesuit value really comes in and it's um, found throughout the four years that you're gonna be there. We really wanna take care of you as a whole person. So you're gonna hear that throughout the four years that, that you're there. Cure personalis, care for the whole person. We will take care of you academically, socially and professionally. And we do a lot of community service work as well. So oftentimes when you're, uh, whatever major you're, choosing that's going to be found uh, within the major. We'll want to start your professional development relatively early, giving you a lot of internship opportunities and uh, doing a lot of community service work to help the city of Baltimore become what it is. So just a quick um, snapshot of the school. Most of our students are actually from out of state um, and we have just under 4,000 students. So much smaller than the previous schools, um, but you get a lot of that one-on-one -on -one attention that you're looking for. 38% of our students do identify as students of color. That's up from 26% last year, woo. And um, we're actually one of the most beautiful, ranked one of the most beautiful campuses on the East Coast. 
uh, we are a registered arboretum. So if any of you are plant rents over COVID, you'll be happy to know that there are some of our buildings that actually have live plant walls inside uh, with irrigation systems running through. Um, so our residence halls are, we have 17 residence halls. They're located about 15 to 20 minutes walking from your um, academic buildings. And we, act, we also have a highest rate of students living on campus all four years, 81%. Um, and all of our residence halls are actually apartment style complexes. When we bought them, we bought them as apartment style housings. So they're all double room suites um, with a bathroom linked between. And that's a, I think that's a pretty good, good opportunity for a lot of our freshmen as well. As I mentioned before, we're located in Baltimore City. Um, and if you didn't, if you haven't visited Baltimore yet, I really recommend going. Um, it's going through a bit of a renaissance right now. And what I mean by that is, I mean, a lot of young professionals are actually moving into the city and staying. Um, what you see here is the Inner Harbor. We're located about 15, 20 minutes driving from the Inner Harbor. Uh, there's tons of great food, crab cake and seafood in particular, if you like that. We're ranked top five on Yelp for <laughs> cities, uh, for foodie cities and top five. Immediate campus area, um, we're actually located along uh, the between Towson University and uh, John Hopkins University. Baltimore City itself is made up of 18 different colleges and universities, so there's a lot of young professionals there. And we're a part of a Baltimore College Network, which means you can see all the events going on through all those schools and definitely participate in them during the weekends as well. You can also take one credit um, per semester at one of the universities and it completely transfers over. Um, so in your first year there, you're going to be part of a cohort called the Messina. The Messina is 15 to 16 students and is led by a faculty advisor. And that's really to make sure that you are getting as much support as you need to understand what kind of struggles you're going through. Sometimes you're meeting in the courtyard, sometimes you're meeting in a classroom, um, other times you're going out for lunch. And I mentioned before that we have a relatively small class size. So not more than 20 students per class, a student to faculty ratio of 12 to one. We have over 45 different majors and 50 different minors. Our top majors are psychology, biology, business, and within business, accounting, marketing, finance, and economics. Growing areas are political science and forensic sci uh, studies. And I think that's because we're only located 35 minutes to 40 minutes from the DC area. There's so many opportunities um, for study abroad, research and fellowships. Um, two thirds of our students actually do study abroad, which is a pretty high rate. Um, and we're on every single continent except Antarctica, over 30 different countries. And if you see a country you wanna go to um, and we're not there yet, we'll try our hardest to work with you to find uh, an opportunity over there. Also your financial aid, scholarships and credits all complete transfer over. So you're really not paying anything out of, except for whatever um, pocket spend that you need. Um, there's tons of opportunities for research and fellowships. As I mentioned, 80% of the students um, in our school do some type of research or fellowship uh, with, within the four years that they're there. We are Common App exclusive. We just require one essay, um, your one counselor recommendation and one teacher application uh, recommendation. Uh, we've been test optional since 2009. Uh, we don't think it paints the full picture of the student, but if you are going to submit your test scores, we do super score. Um, and just to give you a snapshot of your, um, the average student that we enrolled last year, their average GPA was a 3.65, their middle 50% of their SAT was 1200 to 1360, and middle ACT was 27 to 32. If you choose to submit your application uh, test scores and decide later on, I shouldn't have done that, just email me, I'll scrub it. Um, and thank you so much. <laughs> thank time. you, Loyola University, Maryland. Next to present tonight will be DePaul University. Awesome, thank you so much. Hello from Indiana. We're gonna just venture back over to the Midwest. I am Ben Hatchett, Regional Associate Director of Admission at DePaul University. We're in Indiana. We are just west of Indianapolis, Indiana. We're located in the town of Greencastle, 
very pretty college town, a small university. We're home to 2,000 students, entirely undergrad. During your four years at DePaul, you'll have access to a variety of opportunities, both on campus and around the world. And so in six minutes or less, I'm going to share all the favorite things that I enjoy most about our school. We have been recognized for a lot of things. We are the number one liberal arts college in the state of Indiana. We're a top 50 liberal arts and sciences school in the nation. We've also been recognized as one of the most innovative schools, thinking critically and thinking intentionally about making this an amazing four-year experience to prepare you well for life after DePaul. Our university is home to three schools. You can start your studies in our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. That's where a majority of our students are learning in. All said and done, the grand total is over 49 majors and 56 minors to choose from over the course of your four years. Hopefully, we have something on that ever-growing list that might catch your eye and interest. If not, that's okay too. It helps to have an idea of what you wanna start with. Our students don't have to officially declare their major though until March of your sophomore year, which would actually give you a year and a half to take some classes. You wouldn't entirely be on your own for that year and a half. You'd have some direction from us and your academic advisors, but it's a really great year and a half for you to get to experience the curriculum not only just breathe and get acclimated to life in college, but figure out what you truly enjoy. You can see on here our top listing of majors when it comes to the College of the Arts and Sciences. And then our most exciting new update for next year is the launch of our School of Business and Leadership. For over 180 years, DePaul has had a really strong business and economics program, but we're really excited to formalize it with a new area of study and a new school focusing on business and leadership, including new majors in there. We have business analytics, finance, and entrepreneurship as new fields taking part in that expansion come next year. For any musicians in the room, we have an amazing school of music where you can continue your studies in four main degree offerings, including a five-year dual degree, where if you're a musician and arts are important to you, you could audition and be part of our school of music or get to DePaul and still get be involved in any of our performing opportunities. We do offer music opportunities and scholarship for music majors and non-music majors during their four or five years at DePaul. We also have five unique honors and fellows programs. These get a little more specialized. If you are looking at schools that might mention an honors college or something equivalent, our, our example of that is our honor scholar program. If you're in, in, interested at all in sustainability, environmental ethics, or advocacy, we do have a specialty program that just focuses on that in four years, which you probably guessed it. That's our environmental fellows program. We have a great four-year program that gets you experience in media and management. And then we also, last but not least, have a four-year honors program focusing just on STEM fields through science research. As your admission counselor and our whole team and in the office of admission can help you figure out which of those five programs or several are right for you, but I like to talk a little bit about them because these are things you could check out during your application process or even when you got to DePaul. I mentioned earlier that we're pretty well known to send students all over the place. We're actually third in the country when it comes to study abroad. Over 70% of our DePaul Tigers will have an opportunity to travel the world and have at least one global experience by the time you graduate. We include study abroad in two categories. You can have the traditional full semester study abroad opportunity. That's where you are actually going and taking classes at an international institution for a full semester, or you could go on a DePaul-led winter term or May term. These are great bridge terms in between the academic semesters of the fall and the spring, where you can actually go with a group of DePaul students led by two faculty members. So the op opportunities and options are really limitless and open to you, but in any given year, we have over 120 different destinations for you to experience and check out the moment you arrive on campus. Most of our students will complete study abroad experiences by their sophomore and junior year. We like to think we're good for a lot of things, but don't just take our word for it. Here are a couple little statistics that show off some of our outcomes and where we've sent students all over. We have really success, successful pathways into law and medicine. Those aren't the only two graduate school options that we send our students after graduating, but some really strong placement rates and pathways there. Uh, we've been recognized in a 2022 study from Georgetown and their workforce and education program, where over the course of a lifetime, that DePaul student is earning in the, seven, in the top 7% in the nation in terms of global um, and, and earnings over the course of their career. 
the most fun part, easy for me to say, as a college admission counselor, maybe the most nerve wracking for you is this exciting college application process. We can collectively take a breath. It's going to be a lot. And I know it can feel like a lot, but please know every school that you're learning from tonight is here to help you. We are truly test optional and we have three free and easy ways to complete your application. If you get hung up or need help, please don't hesitate to reach out to me or anyone on our, on our team or at any institution you're looking at. Your application, your, your admission counselors are truly here to help you. We have a variety of things that we, we look for. We focus on that transcript, your full four-year curriculum. We love looking at those letters of recommendation. And by choosing to join us tonight virtually, that shows a great future check mark on your application. Please don't hesitate to reach out if you need anything. And I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about DePaul. Thank you. Thank you, DePaul University. Next up will be Western New England University. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, so my name is Emily Smith, and I am an assistant director of uh, international and domestic admissions here at Western New England University. Um, so Western New England University was founded in 1919, so we celebrated our centennial uh, just a couple years ago, and we actually became a university. University uh, just 12 years ago now. So prior to that, we were Western New England College. Uh, we are a small private school located in Springfield, Massachusetts, which is in the western part of the state, but the northeast region of the United States. We have about 2,600 undergraduate students um, and home to a total of four, uh, just under 4,000 students. Our students are coming from all over the northeast and United States, as well as internationally. 40 states are represented on our uh, campus, as well as 26 foreign countries. Um, and just to give you a little bit of um, context for our university and how big we are, um, we have just about 28 academic buildings on campus, and we're located on 215 acres of land. That seems like a lot, I promise, from one end to the other, from your dorm to your academic building. It's only gonna be about a 10 minute walk. I'm very tall. I like to tell people it takes me about seven and a half minutes. If you can break my record, I will be incredibly impressed. Please come to campus and prove me wrong. Um, a little bit about our academic offerings. So we have four colleges. We have a College of Arts and Sciences, a College of Business, College of Engineering, a College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences, as well as a School of Law. Within our college, College of Arts and Sciences that is probably um, that holds the most majors and the most diverse amount of majors so or um, context of majors so we have everything from psychology uh, BS and BA track uh, health sciences which can help those students who are looking to go the pre-med track uh, biology chemistry all the way to um, you know criminal justice and um, um, history and political science. So a huge array of majors on our campus, and that is only within one college. Um, within our College of Business, our most popular programs over the last couple of years have been sports management as well as finance. Um, our College of Engineering, our largest and mo most popular major is the college is mechanical engineering. We have also introduced um, programs such as construction management to help prepare for the future jobs that are going to be in our society. Um, with in our College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences, we actually have a direct entry program for our PharmD program. So if you are a high school student who is already thinking about, um, you know, graduate school and uh, going into your doctorate program, possibly for pharmacy, we have that direct entry program. Um, and last but not least is our School of Law. So Western New England is a, a school that offers a three plus three program. That means that you spend uh, six years in school, getting two degrees, spending less time and less money, which is what everyone likes to do. So in total, we have over 50 academic programs uh, for Western New England. And again, we are a small private institution having about 12 to one student to faculty ratio. In terms of being involved on campus, uh, about 80% of our students uh, are in involved in a club or organization at um, one way or another. Um, and with that same statistic, 
statistic, about 80% of our students have an internship throughout their four years. Um, this is a huge testament to our job placement rate um, within six months of graduation is it, it is about 98%. Uh, so 98% of our students have a job within uh, six months of graduation. Uh, we have 20 division three men and women's sports um, that you are more than welcome to reach out to coaches. I am one of the athletic liaisons, so feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions about that. Looking at your first year at Western New England, um, one of our huge uh, selling points and something that makes us really unique is how individualized our approach is for every, uh, for every student who comes to Western New England. Um, so we have an entire division de dedicated to first year students. Um, we have a comprehensive advising where every admitted student is an assigned an advisor that will stick with them throughout their four years and help them you know, figure out what you are going to do not only at Western New England, but also beyond. Like I was talking about before, uh, this statistic from 2019 is actually updated to 98%, which is extremely exciting. So 98% uh, of the class of 2021 were offered employment within six months of graduation. We also have over a thousand internship and business opportunities uh, within our career center. Um, so we are constantly helping students get internships, jobs, uh, summer jobs, anything that you can name. And then we were also named number one in Massachusetts for job preparedness and number five in the nation. Um, so you are getting a return on your investment by coming and uh, looking at Western New England. In terms of the application process, we are trying to make it as easy as possible. Um, all we are looking for is your Common App. Uh, you can submit that by November 1st and get an additional $2,000 per year. We're on the Common App as well as having a Western New England application. Doesn't matter to us. Um, you'll receive a decision approximately two weeks later. We're looking for your transcript. We are completely test optional, um, looking for a personal essay, talk about whatever you'd like, and letters of recommendation are also optional. Our merit scholarships range from $12,000 to $24,000 per year for every accepted student. Um, and for further information, please feel free to reach out to us. We love it when students reach out and um, we are just here to help you through the process. Thanks so much. Thank you, Western New England University. Next will be University of Buffalo. Cool, hopefully you guys can hear me. Uh, my name is Sterling Taplin. I am a regional recruiter for the University of Buffalo. So let's get started with our campus profile. As you can see, 48% women, 52% men. I know those numbers have changed a little bit, but 102 countries represented on campus with 48 states represented on campus. And that gives us our under our undergrad number of 22,306. Our grad student, 10,041 with a total student number of 32,347. And as you can see at the bottom, I put there, we have our 13 to one student to faculty ratio. Cool, so national recognition, number one public university in New York State. Top 30 amongst US institutions enrolling largest number of international students for the past 15 years. One of six institutions in the AAU, a prestigious group of America's leading research universities that are at the forefront breakthrough in education and research. And as you can see, top 40 public university. Cool, so UB offers 140 under undergraduate programs, 55 combined, and 300 plus graduate and professional programs. And starting your first semester, 100% of UB students have the opportunity to participate in research, internships, service, and learnings. So how we make higher education as affordable as possible? Well, 370 million in scholarship and financial aid, finishing four, which is our commitment to your graduation in four years. And cool thing about that is my mother works at the University of Buffalo and she was on the committee for the finishing four. So I kind of got a little bragging rights there. And as the number one public institution, University of Buffalo, our tuition is fraction of the cost of our peer institutions. 
my buddy Bernard here. So the UB Alumni Network, 280,000 plus UB alumni across all 50 states and 150 countries. And there's 150 plus in New York State alone. And my buddy Bernard here is an example of one of the alumni who come back for the engineering program and sets programs up for students to be successful in college and out of college. So our alumni are great and they all come back for all of our programs and make sure that students are successful. So our true blue spirit, we are a division one school. Uh, we're in the MAC, the Mid-American Conference. And we have 400 plus organizations and clubs for academics, culture, sports, and more. And if you do not like one of those 400 plus organizations, clubs for those things, you can start your own. Um, let people embrace what you want them to embrace, which is pretty cool to me. So discover one of the best cities in which to attend college, Buffalo, New York, where I am from. Voted one of America's favorite cities and America's friendliest cities, second largest city in New York State and third most affordable city in the US. We have the Buffalo Bills as well, as, as you can see behind me, Josh Allen and Stefan Diggs. You can't, you can't hate them, you gotta love them. But we also have the Niagara Falls, one of the seven wonders of the world. Uh, we have the Canadian border where you can go to Toronto, an hour and maybe 15 minutes on a bad day. Um, but Buffalo has a lot to offer. Um, we are the originators of the chicken wing. If you love chicken wings, hey, I have a couple of places that you can come hit me up about. So our college and, and our schools and colleges, um, as you can see, we have a total of 13 schools and colleges. Um, the top portion consists of nine schools that serve the undergraduate and the bottom portion is the remaining schools that serve graduate programs. So if you have any questions about that, send them in the Q&A. Okay, our application completion dates. Our early action is November 15th. Our scholarship consideration is December 23rd and our regular decision is February 1st. I always tell people to get things in five days before just in case we need to contact you to get some information that you might be missing in. I know how it feels to be late on uh, completion dates. So definitely don't want that to feel, have anybody to feel that way. So if you have any questions about that, hit me up in the Q&A. And we also with that deadline for the scholarship consideration, our merit scholarship is valued up to 60,000 over four years of study. Thank you. Thank you, University of Buffalo. At this time, I'd like to invite all of the presenters to turn your camera back on for a round of questions. The first question is, what advice would you give to someone who's going through the college search process? University of Michigan? So the advice I would go is visit the schools that you're close enough to visit if you can. You might get a good feeling about the place. Definitely. University of North Carolina, Greensboro. Uh, staying organized and making a list, um, whether that is a list of the schools you're interested in, um, and then adding all of their required documents for the application. It can make things a lot easier. Great. Loyola University, Maryland, what advice would you give to someone going through this college search process? Those are great advice. Um, I would say to definitely uh, ask tons of questions. Don't be shy about asking it. Um, there's no wrong question. DePaul University. My piece of advice would be to start checking out all of our social media accounts. Not only is it free for you, but it's a great informal way for you to start casually scrolling through those feeds I already know you're spending plenty of time on and starting to get some free college tips along the way. Not only will you just be able to spend time on social media, but you'll get casual updates from all of our schools. Won't even feel like you're doing college search homework. Western New England University. I would say utilize the admissions team and the admissions counselors for all of the schools that you're looking at. Um, you know, the requirements for every school can be a little bit different and just a little bit off. So always feel, feel, feel like you can reach out to the admissions team and for any clarification, because that's what we're here for. Great. And University of Buffalo. Awesome. So all great answers. Um, definitely go visit your schools. And the one thing that I do or tell students to do is write down three things that you're really looking for in, in schools. 
And like she said, don't be afraid to ask questions, but make sure those three things are hit. And um, hey, you have your choice. Next question is, what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? University of Michigan. That here at the University of Michigan, we have limitless, limitless opportunities, including research, um, study abroad, and student works. Great. University of North Carolina, Greensboro. So not only is UNCG a STEM school, but it's also an art school. Um, so it's great because you have a little bit of everything. Um, and I'm also originally from Philadelphia and moved down to Greensboro. Um, and I love it. It's a lot of fun. So it's a great environment for people who are used to larger cities as well. Loyola University, Maryland. I want you to remember that if you're looking for a lot of like one-on-one -on -one support, um, community vibes and feels, um, our school definitely has a lot of that. That's the reason why I chose to work there. It's really a safe space. Great, DePaul University, what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? Yeah, for us, we've been doing this well for over 180 years. We are passionate about creating leaders the world needs. And what that means is that by choosing a smaller private liberal arts college like us, we want you to think critically and be passionate about something, but then also be agile and adaptable in this ever-changing world that we live in. Great. Western New England University. So even though we are a smaller institution, um, with just under 4,000 students total, um, we still have the offerings uh, for all of our students of a large institution. So uh, not only do we have um, programs that are like the history and political science, English, we also have those STEM programs, the College of Business, College of Pharmacy, School of Law. Um, and so we are really setting students up for uh, a successful future. Great. University of Buffalo. Um, one thing is just uh, that how diverse we are and we embrace everybody and care for everybody. Um, any problems you have, the University of Buffalo tries to make everything as comfortable as possible for every student that we have. And I'm proud of, proud of that. Thanks. What is one myth you'd like to debunk about the college admissions process? University of Michigan? Um, that we throw out your app if you have a below um, a certain GPA, which is completely false. <laughs> right, University of North Carolina, Greensboro. Um, that we don't actually read the essays. Um, we read everything that you put on the application, no matter how many essays you send us. If you send us five, I'm reading all of them thoroughly. Um, so we're gonna read that. Loyola University, Maryland, what's one myth you would like to debunk? that if, you, if you're submitting your test score um, versus not submitting it, it's gonna weigh differently. If it's a test optional school, it's gonna be weighed the same, accounted for the same, at least for our school. And DePaul University. I'll add that there's never a bad question. We're truly here to help. All of us on this call and any institution you're looking at, we are admission counselors for a reason. While we would love to see you come to our institutions, our goal is just to help you find the school that's right for you. Western New England University. Everyone has taken mine. Um, but, but kind of going off of what Ben was saying, um, you know, we are here to help you get to the institution that is going to make your experience the best one that it can. Um, you are not hurting our feelings by saying that you are not interested in coming to our university. It's okay. Um, but if you, you know, want to get off the mailing list, just tell us because otherwise we are going to keep emailing you and just asking. So um, yeah, it's not going to hurt our feelings, I promise. And University of Buffalo, what's one myth you would like to debunk? Uh, everything that everybody just said. <laughs> but um, It's hard to go last. You're right. Yeah. But um, definitely the essay. I have to agree with her that we do read the essay. Like I said, we like to embrace everybody and uh, get to know the person that's coming to the university. So that's the one thing is our the essays. Great, well, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey and we'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. We encourage you to check back to the schedule and sign up for more sessions. You'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other sessions recordings at strivescan.com slash SFP. Thank you. Bye, everyone.